Howdy again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, and this is part 10 of my Stewart steam engine build. I wasn't originally going to have a part 10, but I had several requests, and I had the urge also to run this thing on live steam, so I'm going to do just that. Now, if you haven't seen the first nine parts of this video, where I start with a casting kit and uh, bring it to completion, be sure to go ahead and uh, look at those videos. You may like them. There have been quite a few views on them. So with my little homemade boiler and uh, a few connections in a few minutes, we'll be running on live steam. So stay with me. Well, here's the little Stewart engine if you haven't seen it. And I've mounted it temporarily just on a piece of pine. Eventually I want to mount it on a better uh, pedestal or, or plaque. And I did find one here among my... Uh, junk and my castings and so on. And I, I don't know where I originally got this, but sometimes the plaque that they make a fireplace set on where you set your little uh, brush and all your different tools looks something like this. And that's a cast iron casting that's kind of cute. However, I will need to fill this. I put an Allen screw in there, but if I run that down and uh, fill it with some Bondo and then repaint that, you won't even see that. So that would make, a, I think, a pretty good pedestal for this thing, but that's a future project. But the idea was that when I finish building this little generator, or dynamo, that I've talked about in one of the other videos, and I haven't even started, I just recently got this kit. But when that's done, I think it is kind of in proportion to this, and I think I misspoke in a previous video when I said I have to get a pulley for this and this is the pulley that I had on it I took off and I found this pulley it's only inch and a half and I think I'm going to need larger than that but I was looking here among all the different flywheel that I got and of course you're never going to find the exact one several of you suggested that I put uh, a groove in this flywheel and that's a possibility too in other words to turn the flywheel into a pulley because this thing has to run at about 5,000 RPM. I, I suppose that's to produce the 12 volts and it uh, would be fine if it ran at a, on a, a much lower speed to run some LEDs or something like that. But that, that's in the future too. And this is a quarter inch bore so I would have to sleeve that. Now before I run the engine, remember I talked about torque in the head. So uh, there's my little torque wrench that reads in inch ounces. So after I heat it up and run it, I will have to retorque it just like we do with any Ford automobile. How many inch ounces? I don't know. And of course, I'm just joking. I just had to show off this little torque wrench. I think it's the smallest one I, I ever have seen. It came from a clock factory. Okay, that was foolishness. So this is the boiler, and you've seen that in other videos, and it's propane fired. I already filled it about half full with distilled water. Never use tap water. It has to be distilled water. So I'm going to hook this up. Uh, just with a rubber hose, and that's actually vacuum hose. But I'm only going to be running this thing at about two or three or four pounds of pressure. So even though this could blow, the pressure is so minute that it's uh, insignificant. But I wouldn't let children play with something like this because they could get scalded to death by the steam, like the wreck of the old 97. Before it gets too hot to touch, you can see I've got a little gauge on here, but it'll hardly register because the pressure is so low. And I've got my on and off valve here. I think that uh, B stands for Babcock and Wilson. I'm not sure. That's kind of tight, so I'm going to need a pliers. Hmm, boy, that thing hasn't been turned in years. There. There we go. So that's off. And I have a little burner down at the bottom here. I think I made that. Kind of forgot so long ago. And this thing has a superheater, so notice that 
the steam comes out of the top of the boiler and then it goes back into the burner and then out and uh, we call that a superheater or I do pretty crude but that's what it is so I'm gonna fire it up and that'll take a few minutes to bring up to steam five minutes has passed and the gauge which is out of your view is at about 4 psi I turned the heat down a little bit so I can control some of it with the size of the flame now when the steam first comes into a cold engine this is just as cool as a cucumber there's going to be a lot of condensation and water so that's why I got one of my wife's guest stalls underneath her to absorb the mess so now I'm going to crack the valve just a little bit and get some uh, steam into the engine. Ah, did you see it kick over? That immediately reduced it to zero pressure, so I turned the burner up a little bit. You can see the water has filled the cylinders. Oh, I got old faithful. And it's starting to warm up. Now you see why I got the towel there, don't you? And if the burner and the boiler was a little bit farther away, this would be totally silent. And my pop-off valve just blew. You see the pop-off valve? So I'm going to turn the heat down a little bit. A little bit. So it's at 10 PSI right now. You see the steam coming out of the pop-off valve? That came from an old cooking kettle. And it's set at 10 PSI. And I don't know how many pounds of pressure is actually going into the engine because I am using that little valve with a B on it to control the amount of steam. There you can see the exhaust. And in a moment or two, the entire engine will be hot enough to where there won't be so much condensation and mess. That's why a lot of the little toy engines like the Jensen's and so on have a base that is uh, basically a pan to collect the mess. Because mother doesn't like that on her living room carpet. Pretty neat, huh? Five minutes has passed and the gauge, which is out of your view, is at about 4 psi. I turned the heat down a little bit so I can control some of it with the size of the flame. 
Now, when the steam first comes into a cold engine, this is just as cool as a cucumber, there's going to be a lot of condensation and water. So that's why I got one of my wife's guest stalls underneath her to absorb the mess. So now I'm going to crack the valve just a little bit and get some uh, steam into the engine. Ah, did you see it kick over? That immediately reduced it to zero pressure, so I turned the burner up a little bit. It takes a little while to get the uh, the heat regulated and so on uh, when you're doing this, especially if you don't do it very often. And remember the bore is so small on this engine that it's not uh, requiring very much steam. If you haven't seen the other videos, this is an oscillating engine, sometimes called a wobbler. When I'm done for the day here, I will dry everything off real well and I'll oil that flywheel because any exposed parts will want to rust overnight. I did put some oil into the cylinder before I started this, but I'm sure it's all gone by now and got washed out. I think they use lanolin oil or something like that in, in big steam engines and have a way of injecting it continuously. But it's really not very relevant in a small engine like this. You have to be very careful to never let a boiler run out of water. And I do not have a water gauge on this. That's one of the projects that I have for the future, to get a water gauge. I don't know how much is in there. But I, I know that the pint or so that I put in there will last for 10 or 15 minutes. Which is the length of a session or normally for when I play around with something like this. Now, will this have the power and the speed to run that little generator? I don't know, because right now, that valve is wide open. The Babcock valve is wide open. And the pressure gauge is reading 10. I'm going to turn the flame off right now and we'll see how long it will run before the boiler is depleted. Apparently not very long. <laughs> that's about it. Everything is just hotter than a pistol too. Well, that's not too bad but you certainly couldn't touch uh, the cylinder here. The base is just warm. Well, that concludes our run here on live steam. Hope you liked it. And if you can get some of your children that are interested in little steam engines, I think it's kind of awesome. You've seen some of the toys that I have in my collection. All right, this is Tubal Kane, Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, saying so long for now.